Hi, welcome to Inside Cardiology. Today we're discussing a borderline topic of cardiovascular medicine and that is dementia. And as you may know, uh, vascular dementia is actually much more common than what we always call Alzheimer's, which is a very specific form of dementia due to uh, uh, unfolded proteins, uh, as you may uh, be well aware of. So today I will talk about vascular dementia because it is important for cardio uh, cardiologists and cardiovascular physicians at large to know more about this very complication of what we treat on a daily basis. So as we grow older, as you can see here, our memory declines, our cognitive functions decline. And the question is, why is that? Is this unavoidable or can we prevent it? And uh, therefore, it's very interesting that risk factors that we commonly treat for heart disease are also important for our brain. So let's uh, look at the first paper, and this is uh, association between systolic blood pressure and dementia in the Whitehall uh, uh, cohort, which is a, a UK-based uh, huge cohort, and they looked at age and the duration and threshold of uh, hypertension and the risk of dementia. And as you can see on the central slide here, they looked at three age groups where hypertension developed. If you have already hypertension at age 50, you can see that as you grow older, the risk of developing uh, dementia is really high. When you develop uh, uh, high blood pressure at age 60, it is still there, but it's much, much less uh, of a problem. You can see the, stan the, uh, uh, the standard error uh, in the dashed lines. So there's a lot of variability, obviously. And if you develop it at a very high age, above 70, then the risk of dementia is actually non-existent almost. So particularly if you develop high blood pressure when you're young, dementia is a real risk. So we should aggressively treat those patients that develop high blood pressure already at age 45, 50 to avoid in the long term uh, to develop vascular dementia. Another important uh, factor is atrial fibrillation, as you may suspect. And here you see this uh, clot in the left atrial appendix in a patient with uh, atrial fibrillation. And obviously, lots of clots go to the brain. It's a shower of small thrombi that occlude small arteries and develop uh, more and more lesions in the brain, be it uh, uh, microbleedings or uh, cortical lesions that uh, in, impair our cognitive function. And that has been looked at uh, uh, by the uh, Basel group, by uh, uh, David Conan and co-workers uh, in their paper on the relationship and overt and silent brain lesions with cognitive function in patients with atrial fibrillation. And here you can see sort of the uh, tip of the iceberg is stroke. And we know that if you had a stroke, often there is an impairment of cognitive function. But below the water line, there, is, there are silent uh, uh, ischemic lesions in the brain that you can see here, either microbleeds or uh, a, a, a white matter lesions that impair our cognitive function. And they looked at the Montreal Cognitive Assessment according to the presence and absence of a specific vascular brain abnormality. And you can see in blue and in red, in red is uh, our patients with atrial fibrillation. No matter what you look at, at the large non-cortical or cortical infarct, small non-cortical infarcts or uh, microbleeds, uh, everything is uh, impairing the... Uh, uh, cognitive assessment in patients with atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation continuously showers the brain and uh, therefore the question is, uh, is there a risk of dementia eventually or is it just a bit of a cognitive decline? And this has been addressed in another paper from South Korea on the risk of dementia in stroke-free patients diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. And this is also a large cohort and here you can see the cumulative incidence of dementia before and after censoring for stroke in the overall population, uh, including stroke. There is a big difference 
uh, in the overall risk of uh, dementia in blue, uh, in those with atrial fibrillation, in red those without it. And if you uh, censor for stroke, the effect size is a bit smaller, but it's still considerable uh, over uh, uh, several years as shown here on this slide. Now then of course the question is, has the chas twask score that we commonly use for patients with atrial fibrillation, does this have any impact on that? And here you can see that uh, uh, when you calculate the chas twask risk score in patients with or without atrial fibrillation, obviously you can do it in both population, although it has been designed only for atrial fibrillation patients, you can see those uh, columns in black are always significantly higher. Uh, the incidence of dementia is increasing uh, as chat ask score increases, both in the presence and absence of atrial fibrillation, but it's much more dominant in those with atrial fibrillation. So the, the, then, of course, the question is, we treat these patients with uh, anticoagulants, obviously, uh, to prevent stroke, can we also reduce the risk of dementia? And here is the cumulative uh, incidence of dementia in patients with incident atrial fibrillation with or without oral anticoagulation. And you can see with no anticoagulation in blue, the risk is significantly higher than if you uh, are anticoagulated as shown in red. So we do something good if we properly anticoagulate patients with atrial fibrillation. Should we go further? Should we actually treat atrial fibrillation to prevent dementia? And this is a um, uh, registry, it's not a randomized trial, uh, again from Korea on uh, less dementia after cather catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation. And it's a nationwide cohort study from this country. And here is the central figure. You can see all uh, dementia in percent over 10 years. And you can see that uh, after, uh, already starting after two years, uh, the number of uh, subjects with dementia that had ablation, uh, underwent ablation for atrial fibrillation is significantly less than in those uh, with medical therapy in red. And when they looked on the right panel in those with stroke or uh, censoring for stroke, you can see that vascular dementia, uh, uh, abbreviated VAD, on the uh, right uh, in each of the panels, you can see that the adjusted ha hazard ratio is markedly reduced by about half uh, in those uh, that underwent uh, um, ablation of atrial fibrillation. Now, obviously, this is not a randomized trial, but it's very interesting data, and it shows dementia is mainly due to vascular disease. And this vascular disease can be treated. We can prevent dementia, at least in part, by treating high blood pressure early and aggressively, particularly in the young. We can anticoagulate uh, subjects that undergo, uh, that uh, develop atrial fibrillation. And in those who undergo atrial fibrillation ablation, possibly we do something additionally beneficial uh, to prevent dementia. So the bad news is it is developing as we age, but the good news are we can do something about it. So remember these trials and use it in your daily practice. Thank you very much for listening.